Ladies and gentlemen, as you are able, please rise. The Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, the Honourable Dwight Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and His Honor, Howard Foote. Thank you. Please be seated. Honorable and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Brown and I am the Private Secretary to the Lieutenant Governor. And I will be your Master of Ceremonies for today's happy occasion. The ceremony will commence with an address by Her Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Right here, you're on. Welcome to each and every one of you. Premier Ball, Mrs. Mary House, who spent many years in this house, Order of Newfoundland and Labrador nominees, family and friends of our nominees, members of the Advisory Council for the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, members of the House of Assembly, Welcome to Government House, and in some cases, welcome back to Government House. We respectfully acknowledge the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as the ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of Indigenous peoples who have contributed to 9,000 years of history, including the Beothic on the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of Indigenous and other people. We also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit. Anytime events honoring the citizens of our province take place at Government House, and it, in its 188 year history, there have been many. It is a good day, and this is indeed a good day for those of us who live in our province, but especially for the 10 distinguished Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who are being formally invested as members of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. The Order of Newfoundland and Labrador is our province's highest honor. It is part of the official honor system of Canada, approved by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 2003. The Order recognizes those individuals who have demonstrated excellence and achievement in any field of endeavor that benefits in an extraordinary manner Newfoundland and Labrador and its residents. The first order of Newfoundland and Labrador was bestowed in 2004. Each year since, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians respected and admired by their fellow citizens for their contribution to our province have been nominated to the order. The Advisory Council of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador is tasked with reviewing all nominations received and recommending to the Lieutenant Governor the names of individuals to be invested into the order. I acknowledge again the members of the council with us today, and I thank them for their commitment and diligence in fulfilling what had to be a very difficult task. 
I'm going to ask them to stand and be recognized because they really did put extraordinary effort into this. Chief Justice Deborah Fry. Chancellor Memorial University, Susan Knight. Sterling Payton, one of our ONL recipients. And Speaker of the House of Assembly, the Honorable Perry Trimper. Thank you so much for your hard work and I know that your deliberations and debate had to really be difficult. This year, the Advisory Council reviewed 99 nominations, of which 10 were recommended. So again, I can only imagine the debate that ensued during the discussions. Prior to the discussions, the council members would have reviewed all the nominations, some of whom would have been nominated prior to this year because a nomination can be carried over for three years. It is my wish that our fellow citizens in every part of our province will continue to nominate men and women for this prestigious recognition. And as can be seen from today's nominees, the standard is very high, as it should be. During my investiture as the first female Lieutenant Governor for Newfoundland and Labrador on May 3rd, uh, 2018, I became Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, making me the 100th recipient of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. I joke that mine came with the job. Not so for those nominees we are honoring today. The 10 individuals being invested into the order are accomplished individuals who represent the rich diversity of our province. While they vary in age, gender, and the nature of their accomplishments, there are two things they all have in common. Their love for Newfoundland and Labrador and their desire to make the world a better place. They are truly deserving of this honor. Congratulations to all 10 and to your families who are here with you today, supporting you as they have done over the years. So it is a great privilege for me and truly an honor as Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador to invest the newest members of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. We will now proceed with the investiture ceremony. Thank you, Your Honor. To be invested into the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Joseph Butler. <clears throat> Joseph Butler is a pioneer of the radio industry in Newfoundland and Labrador and one of the province's highly recognized philanthropists. Mr. Butler became involved with VOCM in 1954 after his father was killed in a plane crash. He began a period of considerable expansion for the radio station that significantly increased the power of the flagship station in St. John's to move to more coverage in rural areas, areas of the province. Under Mr. Butler's leadership, VOCM became the first station in Newfoundland and Labrador to extensively use technology in province-wide news operations and to install in its own ra weather radar and satellite delivery systems. In addition to his broadcasting achievements, Mr. Butler is proud of his involvement with a number of charities. He led the creation of the VOCM uh, CARES Foundation in 1983, which he chaired for 17 years. Since its in inception, the foundation has raised millions of dollars for hundreds of charities in Newfoundland and Labrador. Other initiatives that Mr. B Butler led include the Coats for Kids campaign, the Happy Tree, and the Children's Wish Foundation of Newfoundland and Labrador, which supports children facing life-threatening illnesses. He also personally supported causes such as the Canadian Cancer Society, the Garden of Hope at the Dr. H. Bliss Murphy Cancer Center. Mr. Butler was awarded honorary life mem membership in the Atlantic Association of Prog Broadcasters in 1991 and was named a Paul Harris Fellow in 1992. In the same year, he was inducted into the Canadian Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Aside from Mr. Butler's business expertise, his caring nature, compassion, and servant leadership has helped improve the lives of countless people. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Joseph Butler. Way, sir. Or picture. This one. This one. There you go. Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. 
to receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, the Honorable Richard Cashin. <laughs> Richard Cashin has had a significant impact on Newfoundland and Labrador as a lawyer, politician, and advocate for the fishing industry. After graduating uh, from St. John's, uh, St. Bonaventure's College in St. John's, he attended and graduated from St. Avex uh, University and Dalhousie Law School in Nova Scotia. In 1962, Mr. Cashin was elected as a member of the Parliament for St. John's West and was re-elected in 1963 and 1965. Mr. Cashin has always been passionate about, passionate about our province and its future. His passion led him into a career as a respected, committed, and effective federal politician. This same passion served him well into 1970 when he joined with Father Desmond McGraw in a su successful effort to organize the fishers of Newfoundland and Labrador into a new trade union, the Fish, Food, and Allied Workers Union. He was elected its first president, a position he held from 1971 until his retirement. Mr. Cashin was also instrumental in the establishment of the Labrador Fishermen's Union Shrimp Company. As a progressive thinker, he uh, was also a significant contrib contributor to the Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Labor. Mr. Cashin has represented Newfoundland and Labrador as the Atlantic Commissioner of the Task Force on National Unity. He also served on the Board of Directors for the Salt Fish Corporation, Petro Canada, and the Export Development Board. In 1989, Mr. Cashin was appointed as an officer of the Order of Canada, and in 1992, he was sworn in to the Queen's Privy Council for Canada. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Richard Cashin. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Paula Daw. Paula Daw is a retired person following a long and successful career as a primary school teacher and who has been described as an ordinary person doing extraordinary things with and for the people of her community. She has been an active volunteer in Happy Valley Goose Bay for decades. She is one of the organizers with the Roland Shears Memorial Christmas Hamper Program a cause that she has served since its inception some 40 years ago, where she plays a key organizational role. Ms. Daw was also a volunteer with the Melville Mantis swim team for more than 20 years, participating in local and provincial boards, as well as representing the province nationally. She currently oversees the local Kids Eat Smart program at Peacock Primary School, ensuring that children have access to nutritious food during the day. She performs virtually all tasks required from purchasing the food to delivering it to the classrooms. <coughs> Ms. Daw is also well known as a tutor who actually physically attends classes with her students, particularly with some students who may face personal challenges. Ms. Daw remains actively involved with the United Church as a member of the ministry and the personnel committee. Ms. Daw has been described as an exemplary example of what it means to give back to one's community, demonstrating dedication, uh, enthusiasm and commitment to those organizations she has supported and continues to support. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Paula Daw. <laughs> <coughs>
to receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Reverend Arthur G. Elliott. <clears throat> a retired minister of the United Church of Canada, Rather, Reverend Arthur Elliott, holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Mount Allison University and a Master of Divinity degree from Pine Hill Divinity Hall in Halifax. Reverend Elliott served as a school principal in Tulligate and Port Anston before serving as a member uh, minister of the United Church in several Canadian provinces prior to coming home to serve in Newfoundland and Labrador in Bay Roberts, Lewisport and St. John's. He has held several leadership roles within the church, including as the president of the United Church Conference. Reverend Elliott's contribution to the province became even more significant following his retirement. He undertook a number of volunteer activities in the Lewisport area, which include four terms as chair of the Lewisport and Area Chamber of Commerce, chairman of the Lewisport Area Economic Development Committee, chair of several community action committees. He initiated the formation of the Notre Dame Bay East Coast Marina Association, director of the Lewisport and Area Co Cooperative. He is well known for his tireless efforts leading to the establishment of a health care center for the town and for founding the Calypso Foundation, an organization that assists adults with developmental delays. Reverend Elliott received a Seniors of Distinction Award in 2011. He has been and continues to be an activist for social and economic development and has been described as, quote, a true citizen of Newfoundland and Labrador who has dedicated his life to benefiting others. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Arthur G. Elliott. <laughs> To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Darrell Fry. Mr. Darrell Fry received a Bachelor of Science degree at Memorial University and a Chemical Engineering degree from what is now known as the Technical University of Nova Scotia. He then embarked on a business career that spanned more than 30 years, culminating with him serving as the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of SciTech Industries. In that role, he placed great emphasis on developing leaders, and that focus became the core value of the Fry Family Foundation. Darrell and Marlene Fry are co-founders co of the Fry Family Foundation, an organization that contributes to building stronger communities and developing the future talent of our province by supporting health, social causes, and the arts. The foundation has provided support to the Agnes Pratt uh, Home Foundation's Change of Face program, uh, the Salvation Army's Glenbrook Lodge, the Salvation Army's Center for Hope, Transforming Lives Together, and helped establish the House of Diamonds Arts Center and the Ken Diamond Memorial Park in Glovertown. The foundation also invests in the development of future talent of Newfoundland and Labrador by providing more than 1,000 scholarships to date to students at Memorial University, the Marine Institute, and the College of the North Atlantic. In addition to the scholarships, Mr. Fry has acted as mentor and investor with Memorial University's Genesis Center, and he has helped launch the university's Horizon Leadership Program. Mr. Fry attributes much of his success in business to what he learned in this province. He learned to be an independent thinker. He wasn't afraid to be different and did not always follow the herd. Mr. Fry received an honorary doctorate from Memorial University in 1997. In his address to students at convocation, he said, it is what you do that counts. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Daryl Fry.
To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Ms. Cassandra Ivany. Cassandra Ivany, affectionately known as Cassie, was born in Clarenville in 1929 and has lived there her entire life. As a young woman, Ms. Ivany began volunteering with the Red Cross, which started a relationship that lasted for decades, culminating with her receiving a citation and certificates for merit and appreciation. Ms. Ivany is well known in Clarenville for her hospice work with the sick and the infirm and for her significant contributions to the Dr. G.B. Cross Memorial Hospital. In 1954, Ms. Ivany became a member of the Rebecca's and still faithfully attends monthly meetings. She has held a number of executive positions with the organization, including Warden and Noble Grand. She is also a lifetime member of the United Church Women and participates in fundraising, fu fundraising funerals, special occasions, and accompanies the minister on home and hospital rounds. In her 80s, Ms. Ivany began working with Gather that is, generating awareness through healthy eating and recreation. A service providing activities that enhance quality of life with exercise, socialization, continuous learning, intergenerational activities, entertainment, outings, and mutual caring. She volunteered with numerous uh, youth organizations in the, in the region, including considerable time in the Clarenville Area Minor Hockey Association. Her contributions to her community and people are measured in the thousands. And I quote Ms. Ivany's grandson, whose statements have been confirmed by members of the community. Nan's contributions, and I quote, Nan, Nan's contri contributions are measured in the thousands. Thousands of cookies baked for fairs, thousands of rides for seniors without transportation, thousands of hours at the hospital serving food or sitting with patients, thousands of transactions at the hospital gift shop where she volunteers, thousands of dollars collected for charities, and thousands of gifts bestowed on a myriad of forms, material, emotional, and spiritual. In 2001, the Government of Canada recognized her for outstanding service and contribution as a volunteer, and in 2013, the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador issued her a Certificate of Appreciation for recognition of her community contribution and volunteer service. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Cassandra Ivan. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Caitlin Osmond. <laughs> Caitlin Osmond was born in Newfoundland and Labrador, where she called Marystown home for her early childhood. She started figure skating when she was three, and at the age of eight, moved with her family, first to Montreal and subsequently to Edmonton, where she could receive enhanced training. And although Ms. Osmond's current residence is in Sherwood Park, Alberta, she has never really left home. In fact, on the Canadian Olympic team's official website, she lists two home provinces, Alberta and Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as two hometowns of Sherwood Park, Alberta, and Marystown, Newfoundland and Labrador. She is the consummate proud Newfoundlander and Labradorian, and she consistently reminds and advises people all over the world and throughout Canada where her roots lay. In 2006, at the National Junior Championships, Ms. Osmond set a Canadian record in the juvenile category on her way to winning her first national title when she was just 10 years old. Tragically, at 18 years old, Ms. Osmond suffered a broken leg during a skating practice, which required significant surgery to the leg. Such a surgery could easily end the career of any athlete. Ms. Osmond, however, demonstrated the tenacity and determination of a person much senior to her age, and following the surgery, had to learn to walk, run, and then skate. Four years later, she came roaring back. In doing so, she has inspired countless young skaters, particularly young girls who admire her tenacity, talent, and athleticism. Ms. Osmond has since won three Canadian national titles, Olympic gold, silver, and bronze medals, and the 2018 World Figure Skating Championship, which becoming the first Canadian woman 
in 45 years to achieve that honor. Having become one of the world's top athletes at such a young age makes Ms. Osmond an inspiration to us all. In 2014, Marystown became the local arena, uh, named the local arena and, and a street in her honor. And in 2018, the provincial government named the Bjorn Peninsula Highway as Osmond Way in recognition of her considerable achievements. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Caitlin Osmond. Caitlin is now officially our youngest uh, recipient of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs> to receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Elder Odell Pike. Odell Pike is a Mi'kmaq elder who has devoted her life to numerous indigenous organizations and causes and has been a volunteer and supporter of figure skating in Newfoundland and Labrador for decades. She served three terms as president of the Aboriginal Women's Network. She also held leadership positions in, with Unluweg, the Bay St. George Cultural Circle, the Newfoundland and Labrador Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse, the Southwest Coast Tourism Network, and the Salmon Preservation Association for the Waters of Newfoundland. Elder Pike, in support of family members, has attended sessions of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls and continues to provide support to the families. For more than 40 years, Ms. Pike has volunteered for figure skating in the province. She served as the Western Region Director of Skate Canada, Newfoundland and Labrador, and also on the Board of Directors of the Provincial Skating Body. She served as a judge at many competitions throughout the province and as a chairperson for many provincial competitions. Elder Pike was honored by Skate Canada as its Newfoundland and Labrador Volunteer of Excellence in 2000. She has also received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Ulnuweg. In 2008, the Newfoundland and Labrador Organization of Women Entrepreneurs, ENLO, presented her with its Visionary Award, and she became uh, she was named Citizen of the Year and Volunteer of the Year with the City of Cornerbrook. Elder Ola Odell Pike has in one way or the other positively affected figure skaters from Newfoundland and Labrador, Aboriginal communities, elder groups, Indigenous sports and youth groups, and women's organizations throughout the province. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Elder Odell Pike. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, John Christopher Pratt. <laughs> Christopher Pratt is among the most successful, respected, and renowned artists in Canada. Growing up in St. John's, he moved to Salmonair in 1963 and had his first solo exhibition at the Memorial University Art Gallery in 1965. Since then, Mr. Pratt has devoted his life and his art to his home province, and his art has been extensively exhibited nationally and internationally. In 2003, his work was the subject of a major nationally touring retrospective organized by the National Gallery of Canada. In 2015, The Rooms launched a 10-year retrospective of his works, which included his travels on the island of Newfoundland. Mr. Pratt's work has been collected by other prominent galleries, including the National Gallery of Canada, the Art Gallery of Ontario, the Canada Council Art Bank, and the Vancouver Art Gallery. His work has been the subject of a number of major publications. Mr. Pratt continues to have a close working relationship with the rooms and has gifted the largest single collection of his works 
to Memorial University and the rooms to ensure that they are available for study by artists, curators, publishers, and researchers from around the world. Mr. Pratt is a giant in the world of art, but he is also a Newfoundlander and Labradorian first. Knowledgeable and sensitive to our history, our politics, our culture, our land, and our economy, he is a true ambassador for the province. Mr. Pratt was named um, an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1973 and elevated to the level of Companion in 1983. He has honorary doctorates from Memorial University, Mount Allison University, and Dalhousie University and was made an Honorary Fellow of the Ontario College of Art. In 1980, he designed the provincial flag of Newfoundland and Labrador, which flies proudly throughout our province. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, John Christopher Pratt. <laughs> Dr. Loidetta Cueco to be invested into the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Originally from Sierra Leone, Dr. Lodetta Cueco received a law degree from the University of South Australia and moved to Newfoundland and Labrador in 1982. Since coming to the province, she has distinguished herself for decades in academia and for her dedication and support for a number of social causes. Her committee work has helped inform public policy initiatives on culture, law, population growth and immigrant integration. Dr. Cueco is the founder and chief executive officer for Sharing Our Cultures. Established 20 years ago, the program engages high school youth in skills development workshops which culminate in them sharing their cultures with the public and hundreds of grade six students at an annual event at the rooms. The event has been described as fun yet very moving. She also serves or has served on numerous committees and boards including the Minister's Roundtable for Immigration, the Multicultural Education Advisory Co Committee, the Omni East Advisory Council, the St. John's Local Immigration Partnership, the Law Commission of Canada, the Multicultural Women's Organization of Newfoundland and Labrador, the African Canadian Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, the International Ministries Team at Bethesda Pentecostal Church, the Seniors Resource Center, the Community Sector Council of Newfoundland and Labrador, the Newfoundland and Labrador Health and Pluralistic Societies and McDonald Drive Elementary School Council where she advocated for resources for immigrant children. Dr. Cueco's contribution to Newfoundland and Labrador has been immense. She has been a trailblazer, a strong presence, an exceptional leader and an advocate for youth, especially immigrant children. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Dr. Lordetta Cueco. Thank you, Your Honours and Premier. The ceremony will conclude with an address by the Premier. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Dwight Ball, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, thank you, uh, David. And congratulations, everyone. It is certainly my pleasure to be here with Your Honour and all the uh, Order of Newfoundland and Labrador recipients. Well, first of all, before I begin, I want to acknowledge the work of Her Honor as Chancellor. I really appreciate the hospitality of, uh, and for hosting us at Government House. We all know that this is an historic and a wonderful building, 
But I also want to recognize and applaud her honor for the, uh, making the grounds more accessible to the people of our province. And she's demonstrated that on many occasions. I know there's been a few exercise programs and a bit of yoga that's occurring on these grounds. I'm not so sure if I'm ready to attend those yoga events, but nevertheless, I know it's getting quite the turnout. But back to the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. As you know, this is the highest honor that has a province that we can bestow on any resident within our province. And the 10 recipients this year, you will be joining a very select group of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. So Mr. Butler, Mr. Cashin, Ms. Sta, Mr. Elliott, Mr. Fry, Ms. Ivany, Ms. Osmond, the youngest recipient of the order, Ms. Pike, Mr. Pratt, and Dr. Quaco. After reading your resumes and about your life with great interest, it struck me that your story is just not about and only about your accomplishments, and they are great, but also it's about the personal dedication and the commitment that you have made to your causes. So some of you, it's been volunteering. Some of you have been for your community work and the contributions that you have made. Some of you have been artists, business leaders, athletes. And collectively, your stories are remarkable. And it truly embodies the spirit of what the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador is all about. The order itself was created to recognize individuals who have demonstrated excellence and achievement in any field of endeavor, benefiting in an outstanding manner Newfoundland and Labrador and its residents. In that last part, it speaks about benefiting in an outstanding manner Newfoundland and Labrador and its residents. That really strikes to the core of why we are here. As a province, we have had a long history of helping our fellow residents, and that is further illustrated by those of you here today. Combined, literally, you have hundreds of years of experience ensuring the well-being and the betterment of the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and the province is a much better place to live because of people like you. You serve as role models, you are examples of what it takes to be an engaged citizen. But we also must acknowledge that standing beside you and with you, you have the support of families, you have the patience from your families of allowing you to give up so much of your time because these things matter to you. These are not nine to five jobs, Monday to Friday, these were really round the clock for many of you. So these long evenings, those late nights, those weekends, those holiday commitments that you made, that you made them unselfishly. I understand that in my role. I know what it's like to be away from your family quite often, but you did that in such an unselfish way, and I want to thank you for that. So as I conclude my remarks today by noting that some of you here some of you are quite famous. You're known nationally, you're known internationally, and some of you are not. But that doesn't matter. And that is why the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador is so great. Because being installed in the Order is not a popularity contest, nor are the appointments based on fame or notoriety. The LG demonstrated the great work of the selection committee, and I want to thank them for the great work that they have done. That wasn't an easy task in getting us to where we are today. But through the recipients, you are here today because someone also noticed that your body of work and felt so strongly about, they felt so strongly about it that he took the initiative to nominate you for this well-deserved recognition. If nothing else, today's ceremony and your installation is an acknowledgement that you are appreciated, that your work is validated, and that you've made a difference. You represent the diversity that our province is known for. 
and important to note that you are an inspiration for many people in our next generation that will follow in your footsteps. Some people say that our province is defined by our past. And while that may be true, I also believe that Newfoundland and Labrador, we have a bright future, we have a very bright future, and I believe all of you are in this room has been a major part of that, and you share that view with us. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, congratulations. You are joining a very prestigious group, and I can tell you on behalf of every resident of Newfoundland and Labrador, we are very proud of your accomplishments. So thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. Following the ceremony, their honours and the Premier will receive recipients and guests at a reception in the drawing room, which is directly behind you. Uh, you may uh, exit the room using the back doorway after, after uh, they leave. Would you now join me, please, in rising for the singing of our provincial anthem, the Ode to Newfoundland, and remain standing for the departure of their honours, the Premier, and the newest members of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. You go with their runners for some pictures. Thanks, Doris. Okay, I can like that. 